Remember the gentle smile, crown open. This during everyday life as well. The more we are guided into meditation, for example, at my retreats or my videos, the deeper you penetrate, the more your illusion starts to lose its solid ground. It becomes not so solid ground. So when you've perforated or penetrated sufficiently enough, all that you need really is just some time by yourself to sit and be. At some point, that's all you need. At first, you need guidance. You need to penetrate. You need to realize. You need to contemplate. You need to understand. Not always, but for many people. Then once you've done that, once you've penetrated those illusory walls, those containers, those cups, now all you need to do really is just let the busyness of your day unwind for a few minutes, don't want anything from anything, and just be. And it will take you for a ride. It will take you deeper. It will infuse your experience with God. God will become more obvious. Illusion will become less real. That shift starts to happen more and more beautifully for you, more and more easily. Just take some time every day to, to be, to sit, to let your perception calm down and to let the light of God shine through. And just notice the lightness. Notice the clarity. Notice the no-mindness that starts to show up. A gentle smile, nothing too serious. It's only God. And just be, learn to enjoy just being, really. Not needing to prove anything, not needing to have conversation, not needing to show anything, talk about something. No need to memorize anything. No need to get anything done. Just for a period of time every day. And you'll start to get naturally addicted to the ease of Satchidananda. It just starts to happen for you. You just need to know about it and then let the mind go and not take it too seriously. And it will start to happen. It will start to reveal itself. You just are and you start really, really enjoying the ease of being. And that ease of being is that first level of the gradient of God, of I, I. And from there, ease will just naturally turn into brightness and bliss and freedom. Don't worry about it. Just sit in the ease that you are able to feel right now. The ease of being, of not trying, of not needing to do anything. If anything, just don't want anything from anything. It's a very helpful tool because it will slow the mind right down. Sometimes you have such a busy day that even when you just, all you try to do is enjoy not having to do anything, your mind will still go crazy. So then, don't want anything from mind. Don't want anything from the busyness. Take that additional step back. Don't want anything from your wants. Does that make sense? So even if you're filled with desire, I'm not talking about being without desires in the level of appearances. I'm talking about not grasping for it and not wanting anything from even the level of desires to change. A desire comes, don't try to get rid of it. Just don't want anything from the desire and it'll come and go and disappear. You're taking the fuel, you're taking the power source out of the mind when you stop wanting anything to change or be different. When you become so tiny, that you can't grasp, you have no will, you have no ability to argue, resist, or hold on to anything. You just, you fall through the cracks. You're so tiny, you have no arms, no legs, no mind. And then just be there and let that ease, that lightness, and that gentle smile, let it pervade you, just be there, that's all. So let it be done, let it happen. You already are the teacher, you know.
the teacher is so you. You need to become a little more quiet, and then your vision starts to expand, your realization starts to dawn. It's really just awareness of being, awareness of existing. That is your prime teacher. Not concepts, not ideas, not things that come and go. That which does not come and go is your teacher. It's always here. It's more intimate than the beating of your heart. It's closer than your eyes. It's before language. Pre-language, you are. Imagine yourself having never learned a language, being unable to speak, having lived for as many years as you've lived without ever having spoken, understood, or thought in language. What would remain? What would your sense of self be like then? Or imagine a nuclear explosion blew your mind to smithereens, never to be reassembled again. Then what are you? Then what remains? Without mind, or even the capacity for mind, what is? Be that, and enjoy, with a smile. Give yourself permission to loosen up, and actually enjoy the simplicity of this. It's like the beautiful example of the woman who has been serious all her life. Just having to shake that off. It's so familiar that it seems to be natural, but it's unnatural. It's just permanently unnatural. It's just consistently familiar. That doesn't make it true or natural. It could still be learned, even if it's always there. So what pattern what holding pattern, what form of tension, what personality pattern, what way of seeing, what way of feeling do you carry with you almost permanently in everyday life? What's your normal state of being like? And what if that is not your natural self? What if that's not remotely your natural self? And what if it contains zero benefit to continue it or perpetuate it for the sake of it being familiar? What if you could let yourself go? Your whole sense, your whole texture, the whole flavor of you. What if even that is false? What are you without the sense of you? Without the everyday consistent familiar feeling that you have when you wake up, when you eat, when you speak, what is that background assumption of your unnatural automatic state, your automatic default mode? See if you have one. You most likely do still. So that's like a layer that you can get rid of, like a sheet you can uncover. Maybe it's not normal the way you experience life on a day-to-day -day basis. So maybe from a very alien perspective or a higher density perspective, it's actually ridiculous or insane. Maybe in an alien world, you would be placed in a hospital. <laughs> but we're so familiar with it, we wake up with it every day and we train each other to stay within a certain frequency domain of feeling, being, considering, believing, philosophizing. <laughs> That we think this is normal. What if planet Earth is far from normal? What if on alien worlds everyone is joyful all the time? Always generating from their calling, from source. Always, every second. What if this is very abnormal, what we have here, even in this retreat room? What if your everyday boring state is indeed that? Your everyday boring state. <laughs> what if we could be more alive, even by 10%, 20%, more alive on a day-to-day -day basis? What if we could increase our life aliveness by 1% every single day? That would accumulate fast, because 1% of your happiness level today, 100 days from now, that 1% is your happiness level today. <laughs> Mm 
1% each day. It's not a large upgrade, doesn't require much. Just requires a little bit more smiling, just a little bit more generating, just a little bit more consciousness into every situation. How can I bring forth the frequency of my true self? And how can I rest in awareness of source or beingness? Just a few more minutes a day, raising your frequency, being a little bit more abnormal, getting a little bit out of your comfort zone, a little bit more in degenerative mode, do that 1% more every day of that day, 1% of that day. You know, have fun. Meditate and play. Play and meditate. Be and give. Give and be. Be silent and have fun. Have fun and be silent. Less talking. More being and more playing. We don't need nearly as many words as we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Even just decreasing the amount of talking you do by 10% a day would increase your happiness by at least 1% a day. <laughs> and that of everyone around you, so... <laughs> My calling is... <laughs> people speaking less. <laughs> thus being happier. And it, it trains you to generate because automatically you go to speech to try to explain what you experience or try to convey or manipulate another's experience, right? Literally speaking is manipulation. As um, Ratir Eric told Corey, good for those familiar with those beings. The way that some of these civilizations view speech or talking is as manipulation. There's no other way. You speak to alter another's experience. Why else would you speak? Right? It's a subtle form of manipulation. So be less manipulative. I think this is a Native American saying, probably familiar with it. He who speaks knows not. He who does not speak knows. I'm paraphrasing. Less talking. This forces you into a abnormal mode where you have to suddenly create or generate differently, communicate, be differently. You become more aware of your beingness, of your frequency. And now in order to convey something, you need to smile or be or infuse energy into that experience. That forces you to be happier, to be more generative. Again, you're more happy, you're more fulfilled when you're creating rather than consuming. When you're generating rather than being a victim, reacting to old ideas, patterns, circumstances. Take a deep breath and enjoy the beingness that is before language. You are before you think. It doesn't mean you can't have thoughts, it just means you're aware that you are before the realm of thought even begins. Does that make sense? Pre-verbal, before language, you already were. When you were one year old and you couldn't speak, you were. Be in that wordless state as you were when you were one year old. That is your I am. That's the wordless I am. That is the soul I am. And from there it can only deepen and expand into more of the universal I am, as the sense of space, time, and location are transcended, and only formlessness remains. 